Greetings, WordPressers. Jackson here. How are you? Nice to have you. Welcome to the channel. So yeah, missing blocks. Let me explain. So in default WordPress core, there are a selection of blocks. Let's have a look at them over here. The block list, the blocks list. We've got text blocks, you know, paragraphs and headers and lists and stuff and media blocks, images, gallery. Come to that in a minute. The cover block, which is actually, you know, quite phenomenal. Special coming up on that soon. Design blocks, buttons and groups and rows and stuff. Mostly good, if a little over complicated. Widgets, bits and pieces. Theme blocks, which is for building out your templates and stuff like that, which is quite frankly phenomenal. And then we've got a load and load of embeds blocks for some reason. Now, to build a straightforward site, that is adequate. Literally, I've built tons of sites with just native core blocks, you know, in the last sort of six to eight months since FSE full site editing has come of age. And certainly 6.5 rocketed that into reality at the beginning of the year. Though for many folk, they do complain that there's just not enough blocks or elements, you know, there's missing blocks, especially those folk who have come from page builders where you get a shed load of different elements and blocks way more than we get in WordPress core. But even WordPress.com, you know, automatic, think there's not enough blocks. Because if we take a look at their list of blocks that they kind of install as default as part of the Jetpack, obligatory install. Yeah, there's there's quite a few more blocks. So even they think that there are missing blocks and there should be more. And of course, the aforementioned page builders, the block page builders I'm talking about here, of course, they have got a bucket load of extra blocks and elements and components and, you know, everything. And it should be noted that literally all, every single one of those block page builders come with one thing that is completely missing out of core, and that is the ability to control responsive spacing on different devices, screen sizes. That is the number one fail of current WordPress core. It's outrageous that it's not part of it. I've heard the arguments, they don't stack up. You need it, fluid spacing doesn't work 75% of the time. Anyway, this is not a video about the responsive issues. It's only about missing blocks, standard blocks. And I agree, there are definitely a few missing or some of the blocks that fall short. For example, the gallery block, in WordPress core is just, well, it's not a gallery block. It's just a collection of images and does nothing like what you would expect a component like a gallery to give you in this modern web world. You know, a gallery is something where you have a collection of images, you can control the grid and the size of them. And when you click on one of them, you can scroll through the rest of them. And, and the, the default core block gallery just doesn't do that. Outrageous. Anyway, missing blocks. So yeah, I thought I'd start a little mini series exploring those blocks that are considered missing or perhaps falling short and find solutions to them. So here is episode one of the missing blocks and it is, where's the missing tabs block? You know tabs, defo 100% should be a core block in WordPress. So I had a poke around the, well, a really good look around the repo and there are quite a few block tabs or tab blocks and all of them are either rubbish, out of date, buggy, terrible UI, UX, so no dice there. And I'm certainly not gonna install a big block page builder just to get my tabs block. So I thought I would build my own. Yes, indeed, in native core blocks with a little custom CSS and just a teeny tiny bit of JavaScript. And stay tuned for later on in the vid for a little bonus where I'll show you how to create vertical tabs as well. So here we go, the missing tabs block. So I did actually try every single plugin that's out there for, ta for block tabs. Let me show you what I mean. So I go to plugins and inactive. There's six there that um, I've left there for proof of proof of life, proof of non-life, because they either all were just completely rubbish, out of date. One that was looking good just had a bug in it. And that's when it occurred to me. We've got to try and make our own. So let's, let's see what you're going to end up with. Classic horizontal tabs. Vertical tabs, yes indeed, oh yes. Uh, and this is just another example of um, exactly the same concept, 
but allowing for that classic tab approach where you've got that kind of flowing color that goes from the tab itself through to the actual tab content. And of course, all these little babies are responsive. Let's have a look at that. So if we squeeze that up, it slips to rather nice responsive action. Isn't that jolly? Same with all the others, vertical tabs. That does the same and the border and radius does the same, but takes a tiny bit more work with the CSS. So how's all this achieved? Well, it is literally native blocks plus a teeny weeny bit of JavaScript that controls the showing and hiding of the, the tab content and sets some class and stuff that we can use for styling. And on top of the JavaScript is a little bit of custom CSS, but not that much. Let's get into the page. So if we go back into our admin, by the way, it's just 2024, obviously, with a child theme. And if you want a solid 2024 child theme, the link is in the description. So let's go to our pages and go to our horizontal tabs. And let's have a look, see. So here, we've just got a set of buttons. In fact, let's get that back open. And you see that's a button set. I've renamed these just to give us a little bit of direction on where we're at. So it's a set of buttons. You style them all the same. Then underneath them is the tab content, and that's just a group and underneath are other groups which are the actual content for each tab now i've no, i've named them tab but they're just groups and the naming of them doesn't come into it anywhere and then within each tab group there's just paragraphs but you can literally put whatever content you want it's just free form it's like what you know it's a group you can put anything inside there forms buttons calls to actions whatever you fancy and last on the page is the custom html which which is where the custom CSS and the little bit of JS sit. And uh, we'll take a better look at that in a second. So I just want to point out exactly what makes this work. The important part is the classes that we put on the things. Now the tabs main doesn't have anything, but the tabs buttons has a class called tab buttons. And each button has a class called tab button. So that's that's an important part because the JS and the CSS will work off that to do a little bit of its magic. The tab content has got a class on it and that's just for some CSS stuff. But the tabs, the group tabs, content tabs, we'll see all have the same tab content on them. And that's an important part for the JS and how it identifies them and hides and shows them. They don't need to be called anything special and you, and you can have as many or as few of them as you like. Let me show you what I mean. So if we just deleted button four and we get rid of tab four and we save that and we jump into our front end again, you see, doesn't make any difference. And then if you just add a new one, but I would say the easiest way is to just duplicate stuff, duplicate. And that way, you know, you've always got the classes on. Don't worry, all the files and the pattern codes that you can plonk into your project will be there to download from the link in the description, of course. Save that. And again, we're back to four tabs and you can keep going. The only thing you'll have to watch is that if, and I'll show you this in a sec when we have a quick look at the CSS, is that there's certain breakpoints set up which may need to be changed depending on the width of your top row of buttons. Let's see if that's too long now. You see, yeah, you, well, it's just about right, but you see how that's really close and a little bit further and it breaks but the CSS hasn't kicked in because the CSS kicks in at 7.30 or something. So that's the only sort of variable, but you'll kind of work that out when I show you the CSS. Let's go back to that and just undo all of that. Get back to our original, save that, just so that we can see that working properly. Yeah, you see now on the, I've got it set up for the break point where I want it to break. So it's all nice and groovy. So let's go and take a look at some of this CSS and that JavaScript. This is what's in the HTML block at the bottom. So this here is the sort of the kind of main horizontal stuff. And it's just setting classes based on the classes that we added to the different buttons and the content groups. You can kind of see how that works. And there's that 730. So you would just need to change this here to get everything breaking at the right point for the width of your buttons row. And then if we look at the vertical, let's get back to the vertical on the front end. So what we've done here with the vertical is that we've added a class. Let me just show you on the page. 
we've added a class just on the main top row called tab vertical and that essentially allows us to target that with various css rules that kind of turn it into a grid with columns which you, again you may need to adjust the width of the the first column this one here depending on how long your words are you know your titles are and you'll see that we put a on the main tab buttons we put a height and that is because let's get the inspector open that a bit smaller we inspect the tab buttons which is that one there's our height if we take the height off what happens is it, it kind of spreads around and you the usual ux for that is that it you know it doesn't and also it will change kind of heights the content was bigger or smaller so it looks it looks very messy but you keep, keep it nice and tidy and what you kind of expect to see by sticking that height on there and you see that when we are in vertical we want all those buttons to be full width if they weren't let's go get a button you see we get that kind of stepped they're all their natural widths so little things like that just keep it tight all very sort of kind of straightforward stuff and there's a couple of sort of block overrides here just to keep it even tidier and then you see when we hit our break point which is 600 but could be anything depends on your content obviously is that again they fall into one column grid template columns one one fr one fraction the last one only just decided to throw this in is because with all these they're kind of like they're kind of essentially pill but well they're buttons but they're, you know it could be called pills if you like so it's very easy to take those and then when they're collapsed into mobile view, it doesn't really matter about, you know, the border radius and stuff. They just, you know, just a bit of spacing or whatever might need sorting out. But essentially they're they're good to go. But with, with the design which we've got here, which is the tab and it's really classic where it's sort of the color flows from the tab itself into the content that takes a little bit more to think about on mobile because you see the radius and the borders all need to change up a little bit just to keep the mobile looking cool and that's why there is this kind of extra sort of stuff going on when you want to choose that style of design but again it's pretty straightforward you know it's you know, i'm not going to explain exactly everything but it's saying you know make the, the active tab make its border at the bottom white so it flows in and again on the mobile break we want everything to have the radius because remember these the bottom of these tabs don't have a radius so we've thrown that on there and made them all have a full border a couple of other little tweaks to the layout and the tab content area because at desktop this has got a square corner here top left and of course when we hit the mobile, we want that to be radius as well. I mean, it really is kind of very straightforward CSS, but you know, just kind of done well, if I say it, if, if I say it, even if I say it myself. So here's the JS, very straightforward stuff. It's saying, it's, it's, looking, it's looking out for those two selectors for on, on the entire page. And first part is when it loads, it sets the first tab as active. You could change that if you wanted the second or third tab to be active, but I don't know what sort of UX that would look like. And then it just listens for a click on any of, any of the tabs. And then it will put the active class on that tab and also remove the active class from all the other tabs. And you can see that we've got, that's what this is at the top. Everything is display none unless it's active. And this is the dynamic thing that the JS does and puts it on and off and that's it that really that's, that's that's your lot it's a pretty wicked little bit of kit i thought because none of the plugins come close to the flexibility you have of just using native blocks and a few lines of js and a wee bit of css one little thing to note if you had two sets of tabs you know on a single page you would need to have two sets of classes so where we've got our classes on our buttons here for tab button You'd need to make that, you know, tab button dash two. Same with the buttons group and anywhere where we've got a tab class on it. And then on your, your CSS and your code, you would duplicate the whole thing and then update tab content. Probably do a search and you go tab content dash two and tab button dash two and replace it all like that. So, you know, not a lot of work for a super slick, unbelievably native and fast way of doing tabs in block theming. And by the way, the overhead of the page for the page load, let me tell you, it's about 1.5 KB, less than 2 KB for all of this, which means 
you're going to have super fast, super slick native WordPress blog tabs. Download links for all the files and code is in the description. And if you want a bit more block action, try this one for size. But until next time, I shall see you later.